Packet switching is a method of grouping data that is transmitted over a digital network into packets. Packets are made of a header and a payload. Data in the header are used by networking hardware to direct the packet to its destination where the payload is extracted and used by application software. Packet switching is the primary basis for data communications in computer networks worldwide. In the early 1960s, American computer scientist Paul Baran developed the concept distributed adaptive message block switching with the goal to provide a fault-tolerant, efficient routing method for telecommunication messages as part of a research program at the RAND Corporation, funded by the U.S. Department of Defense. This concept contrasted and contradicted then established principles of pre allocation of network bandwidth, largely fortified by the development of telecommunications in the Bell system. The new concept found little resonance among network implementers until the independent work of British computer scientist Donald Davies at the National Physical Laboratory United Kingdom in 1965. Davies is credited with coining the modern term packet switching and inspiring numerous packet switching networks in the decade following, including the incorporation of the concept in the early ARPANET in the United States. Topic. Concept A simple definition of packet switching is the routing and transferring of data by means of addressed packets so that a channel is occupied during the transmission of the packet only, and upon completion of the transmission the channel is made available for the transfer of other traffic. Packet switching allows delivery of variable bit rate data streams, realized as sequences of packets, over a computer network which allocates transmission resources as needed using statistical multiplexing or dynamic bandwidth allocation techniques. As they traverse networking hardware, such as switches and routers, packets are received, buffered, queued, and retransmitted stored and forwarded, resulting in variable latency and throughput depending on the link capacity and the traffic load on the network. Packets are normally forwarded by intermediate network nodes asynchronously using first-in, first-out buffering, but may be forwarded according to some scheduling discipline for fair queuing, traffic shaping, or for differentiated or guaranteed quality of service, such as weighted fair queuing or leaky bucket. Packet-based communication may be implemented with or without intermediate forwarding nodes switches and routers. In case of a shared physical medium such as radio or 10BASE5, the packets may be delivered according to a multiple access scheme. Packet switching contrasts with another principal networking paradigm, circuit switching, a method which pre-allocates dedicated network bandwidth specifically for each communication session, each having a constant bit rate and latency between nodes. In cases of billable services, such as cellular communication services, circuit switching is characterized by a fee per unit of connection time, even when no data is transferred, while packet switching may be characterized by a fee per unit of information transmitted, such as characters, packets, or messages. History In the late 1950s, the U.S. Air Force established a wide area network for the Semi-Automatic Ground Environment SAGE, radar defense system. They sought a system that might survive a nuclear attack to enable a response, thus diminishing the attractiveness of the first strike advantage by enemies. Leonard Kleinrock conducted early research in queuing theory and published a book in the related field of digital message switching without packets in 1961. The concept of switching small blocks of data was first explored independently by Paul Baran at the Rand Corporation starting in the late 1950s in the US and Donald Davies at the National Physical Laboratory (NPL) in the UK. Baran developed the concept of distributed adaptive message block switching during his research at the RAND Corporation for the U.S. Air Force into communications networks that could survive nuclear wars. The concept was first presented to the Air Force in the summer of 1961 as Briefing B-265, later published as RAND Report P-2626 in 1962, and finally in Report Room 3420 in 1964. Report P-2626 described a general architecture for a large-scale, distributed, survivable communications network. The work focuses on three key ideas, use of a decentralized network with multiple paths between any two points, dividing user messages into message blocks, and delivery of these messages by store and forward switching. Donald Davies at the National Physical Laboratory UK, developed a similar message routing concept in 1965. He called it packet switching, a more accessible name than Baran's terminology, and proposed building a nationwide network in the UK. 
He gave a talk on the proposal in 1966, after which a person from the Ministry of Defense MOD told him about Baran's work. A member of Davies' team Roger Scantlebury met Lawrence Roberts at the 1967 ACM Symposium on Operating System Principles and suggested it for use in the ARPANET. Davies had chosen some of the same parameters for his original network design as did Baran, such as a packet size of 1024 bits. In 1966, Davies proposed that a network should be built at the laboratory to serve the needs of NPL and prove the feasibility of packet switching. After a pilot experiment in 1967, the NPL Data Communications Network entered service in 1969, building on his earlier work on queuing theory. Leonard Kleinrock subsequently carried out theoretical work to model the performance of packet switched networks, which underpinned the development of the ARPANET. The NPL team also carried out simulation work on packet networks. In 1974, Vince F. and Bob Kahn published the specifications for Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, an internetworking protocol for sharing resources using packet switching among the nodes. This monolithic protocol was later layered as TCP atop the Internet Protocol, or IP. The French Cyclades network, designed by Louis Puzin in the early 1970s, was the first to make the hosts responsible for the reliable delivery of data, rather than this being a centralized service of the network itself. <laughs> Connectionless and connection-oriented modes Packet switching may be classified into connectionless packet switching, also known as datagram switching, and connection-oriented packet switching, also known as virtual circuit switching. Examples of connectionless protocols are Ethernet, Internet Protocol and the User Datagram Protocol Connection-oriented protocols include BI.25, Frame Relay, Multiprotocol Label Switching and the Transmission Control Protocol in connectionless mode each packet includes complete addressing information. The packets are routed individually, sometimes resulting in different paths and out-of-order delivery. Each packet is labeled with a destination address, source address, and port numbers. It may also be labeled with the sequence number of the packet. This precludes the need for a dedicated path to help the packet find its way to its destination, but means that much more information is needed in the packet header, which is therefore larger, and this information needs to be looked up in power-hungry content addressable memory. Each packet is dispatched and may go via different routes. Potentially, the system has to do as much work for every packet as the connection-oriented system has to do in connection setup, but with less information as to the application's requirements. At the destination, the original message, data is reassembled in the correct order, based on the packet sequence number. Thus a virtual connection, also known as a virtual circuit or byte stream is provided to the end user by a transport layer protocol, although intermediate network nodes only provides a connectionless network layer service. Connection-oriented transmission requires a setup phase in each involved node before any packet is transferred to establish the parameters of communication. The packets include a connection identifier rather than address information and are negotiated between endpoints so that they are delivered in order and with error checking. Address information is only transferred to each node during the connection setup phase, when the route to the destination is discovered and an entry is added to the switching table in each network node through which the connection passes. The signaling protocols used allow the application to specify its requirements and discover link parameters. Acceptable values for service parameters may be negotiated. Routing a packet requires the node to look up the connection id in a table. The packet header can be small, as it only needs to contain this code and any information, such as length, timestamp, or sequence number, which is different for different packets. <laughs> packet switching in networks Packet switching is used to optimize the use of the channel capacity available in digital telecommunication networks, such as computer networks, and minimize the transmission latency the time it takes for data to pass across the network, and to increase robustness of communication. The best known use of packet switching is the Internet and most local area networks. The Internet is implemented by the Internet Protocol Suite using a variety of link layer technologies. For example, Ethernet and Frame Relay are common. Newer mobile phone technologies e.g., GPRS, iMode also use packet switching. 
By.25 is a notable use of packet switching in that, despite being based on packet switching methods, it provides virtual circuits to the user. These virtual circuits carry variable length packets. In 1978, BI.25 provided the first international and commercial packet switching network, the International Packet Switched Service Asynchronous Transfer Mode also is a virtual circuit technology, which uses fixed-length cell relay connection-oriented packet switching. Datagram packet switching is also called connectionless networking because no connections are established. Technologies such as multi-protocol label switching MPLS and the resource reservation protocol RSVP create virtual circuits on top of datagram networks. Virtual circuits are especially useful in building robust failover mechanisms and allocating bandwidth for delay-sensitive applications. MPLS and its predecessors, as well as ATM, have been called fast packet technologies. MPLS, indeed, has been called ATM without cells. Modern routers, however, do not require these technologies to be able to forward variable length packets at multi-gigabit speeds across the network. Topic by.25 vs Frame Relay Both by.25 and Frame Relay provide connection-oriented operations. By.25 provides it via the network layer of the OSI model, whereas Frame Relay provides it via Level 2, the data link layer. Another major difference between BI.25 and Frame Relay is that BI.25 requires a handshake between the communicating parties before any user packets are transmitted. Frame Relay does not define any such handshakes. BI.25 does not define any operations inside the packet network. It only operates at the user network interface uni. Thus, the network provider is free to use any procedure it wishes inside the network. BI.25 does specify some limited retransmission procedures at the UNI, and its link layer protocol LAPB provides conventional HDLC type link management procedures. Frame Relay is a modified version of ISDN's Layer 2 protocol, LAPD and LAPB. As such, its integrity operations pertain only between nodes on a link, not end-to-end. -end. Any retransmissions must be carried out by higher layer protocols. The BI.25 UNI protocol is part of the BI.25 protocol suite, which consists of the lower three layers of the OSI model. It was widely used at the UNI for packet switching networks during the 1980s and early 1990s, to provide a standardized interface into and out of packet networks. Some implementations used BI.25 within the network as well, but its connection-oriented features made this setup cumbersome and inefficient. Frame Relay operates principally at layer 2 of the OSI model. However, its address field, the data link connection ID or DLCI, can be used at the OSI network layer with a minimum set of procedures. Thus, it rids itself of many BI.25 layer 3 encumbrances, but still has the DLCI as an ID beyond a node to node layer 2 link protocol. The simplicity of Frame Relay makes it faster and more efficient than BI.25. Because Frame Relay is a data link layer protocol, like BI.25 it does not define internal network routing operations. For BI.25, its packet IDs, the virtual circuit and virtual channel numbers, have to be correlated to network addresses. The same is true for Frame Relay's DLCI. How this is done is up to the network provider. Frame Relay, by virtue of having no network layer procedures, is connection-oriented at Layer 2, by using the HDLC, LAPD, LAPB set asynchronous balanced mode SABM. BI.25 connections are typically established for each communication session, but BI.25 does have a feature allowing a limited amount of traffic to be passed across the UNI without the connection-oriented handshake. For a while, Frame Relay was used to interconnect LANs across wide area networks. However, BI.25 and Frame Relay have been supplanted by the Internet Protocol IP at the network layer, and the Asynchronous Transfer Mode ATM and or versions of Multi-Protocol Label Switching MPLS at Layer 2. A typical configuration is to run IP over ATM or a version of MPLS. 25 and related protocols, IEEE Computer Society, 1991 greater than. Topic. Packet-switched networks 
The history of packet switched networks can be divided into three overlapping eras early networks before the introduction of BI.25 and the OSI model, the BI.25 era when many postal, telephone, and telegraph companies introduced networks with BI.25 interfaces, and the Internet era. Early networks Research into packet switching at the National Physical Laboratory NPL began with a proposal for a wide area network in 1965, and a local area network in 1966. ARPANET funding was secured in 1966 by Bob Taylor, and planning began in 1967 when he hired Larry Roberts. The NPL network, ARPANET, and CETA HLN became operational in 1969. Before the introduction of BI.25 in 1973, about 20 different network technologies had been developed. Two fundamental differences involved the division of functions and tasks between the hosts at the edge of the network and the network core. In the datagram system, the hosts have the responsibility to ensure orderly delivery of packets. The User Datagram Protocol UDP, is an example of a datagram protocol. In the virtual call system, the network guarantees sequenced delivery of data to the host. This results in a simpler host interface with less functionality than in the datagram model. The BI.25 protocol suite uses this network type. <laughs> Apple Talk AppleTalk is a proprietary suite of networking protocols developed by Apple in 1985 for Apple Macintosh computers. It was the primary protocol used by Apple devices through the 1980s and 1990s. AppleTalk included features that allowed local area networks to be established ad hoc without the requirement for a centralized router or server. The AppleTalk system automatically assigned addresses, updated the distributed namespace, and configured any required inter network routing. It was a plug-and-play system. AppleTalk versions were also released for the IBM PC and compatibles, and the Apple IIGS. AppleTalk support was available in most networked printers, especially laser printers, some file servers and routers. AppleTalk support was terminated in 2009, replaced by TCP, IP protocols. Topic: <laughs> ARPANET The ARPANET was a progenitor network of the Internet and the first network to run the TCP, IP suite using packet switching technologies. BNRNET BNRNET was a network which Bell Northern Research developed for internal use. It initially had only one host but was designed to support many hosts. BNR later made major contributions to the CCITT BI.25 project. Topic: <inaudible> Cyclades. The Cyclades packet switching network was a French research network designed and directed by Louis Puzin. First demonstrated in 1973, it was developed to explore alternatives to the early ARPANET design and to support network research generally. It was the first network to make the hosts responsible for reliable delivery of data, rather than the network itself, using unreliable datagrams and associated end-to-end -end protocol mechanisms. Concepts of this network influenced later ARPANET architecture. <laughs> DCNet DCNet is a suite of network protocols created by Digital Equipment Corporation, originally released in 1975 in order to connect two PDP-11 minicomputers. It evolved into one of the first peer-to-peer -peer network architectures, thus transforming DEC into a networking powerhouse in the 1980s. Initially built with three layers, it later 1982 evolved into a seven-layer OSI-compliant networking protocol. The DCNet protocols were designed entirely by Digital Equipment Corporation. However, DCNet Phase II and later were open standards with published specifications, and several implementations were developed outside DEC, including one for Linux. Topic <laughs> DDX1. This was an experimental network from Nippon PTT. 
It mixed circuit switching and packet switching. It was succeeded by DDX2. Topic: Ne Cost 2. European Informatics Network was a project to link several national networks. It became operational in 1976. Topic: EPSS. The Experimental Packet Switching System EPSS was an experiment of the UK Post Office. It was the first public packet switching network when it began operating in 1977, based on protocols defined by the UK academic community in 1975. Ferranti supplied the hardware and software. The handling of link control messages acknowledgements and flow control was different from that of most other networks. GEIS As General Electric Information Services GEIS, General Electric was a major international provider of information services. The company originally designed a telephone network to serve as its internal albeit continent -wide, voice telephone network. In 1965, at the instigation of Warner Sinbach, a data network based on this voice phone network was designed to connect GE's four computer sales and service centers Schenectady, New York, Chicago, and Phoenix to facilitate a computer time sharing service, apparently the world's first commercial online service. In addition to selling GE computers, the centers were computer service bureaus, offering batch processing services. They lost money from the beginning, and Sinbach, a high level marketing manager, was given the job of turning the business around. He decided that a time sharing system, based on Kemeny's work at Dartmouth which used a computer on loan from GE could be profitable. Warner was right. After going international some years later, GEIS created a network data center near Cleveland, Ohio. Very little has been published about the internal details of their network. Though it has been stated by some that Timshare copied the GEIS system to create their network, Timnet, the design was hierarchical with redundant communication links. <laughs> IPSANET IPSANET was a semi-private network constructed by IP Sharp Associates to serve their time-sharing customers. It became operational in May 1976. Topic IPX SPX. The Internetwork Packet Exchange (IPX) and Sequenced Packet Exchange (SPX) are novel networking protocols derived from Xerox Network Systems IDP and SPP protocols, respectively. They were used primarily on networks using the Novell Netware operating systems. Topic: <laughs> Merit Network. Merit Network Inc., an independent non-profit 501 c 3 corporation governed by Michigan's public universities, was formed in 1966 as the Michigan Educational Research Information Triad to explore computer networking between three of Michigan's public universities as a means to help the state's educational and economic development. With initial support from the State of Michigan and the National Science Foundation NSF, the packet-switched network was first demonstrated in December 1971 when an interactive host-to-host -host connection was made between the IBM mainframe computer systems at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and Wayne State University in Detroit. In October 1972, connections to the CDC mainframe at Michigan State University in East Lansing completed the triad. Over the next several years, in addition to host-to-host -to -host interactive connections, the network was enhanced to support terminal-to-host -host connections, host-to-host -host batch connections remote job submission, remote printing, batch file transfer, interactive file transfer, gateways to the Timnet and Telenet public data networks, BI.25 host attachments, gateways to BI.25 data networks, Ethernet attached hosts, and eventually TCP, IP. Additionally, public universities in Michigan joined the network. All of this set the stage for Merit's role in the NSFNET project starting in the mid-1980s. NPL 
In 1965, Donald Davies of the National Physical Laboratory United Kingdom designed and proposed a national data network based on packet switching. The proposal was not taken up nationally, but by 1967, a pilot experiment had demonstrated the feasibility of packet switched networks. By 1969, Davies had begun building the Mark I packet switched network to meet the needs of the multidisciplinary laboratory and prove the technology under operational conditions. In 1976, 12 computers and 75 terminal devices were attached, and more were added until the network was replaced in 1986. NPL, followed by ARPANET, were the first two networks in the world to use packet switching, and were interconnected in the early 1970s. Octopus <inaudible> 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 Octopus was a local network at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. It connected sundry hosts at the lab to interactive terminals and various computer peripherals including a bulk storage system. Philips <laughs> <laughs> Research Philips Research Laboratories in Redhill, Surrey developed a packet switching network for internal use. It was a datagram network with a single switching node. Topic. PUP Park Universal Packet PUP or PUP, was one of the two earliest inter-network protocol suites, it was created by researchers at Xerox Park in the mid-1970s. The entire suite provided routing and packet delivery, as well as higher level functions such as a reliable byte stream, along with numerous applications. Further developments led to Xerox Network Systems XNS. RCP RCP was an experimental network created by the French PTT. It was used to gain experience with packet switching technology before the specification of Transpac was frozen. RCP was a virtual circuit network in contrast to Cyclades which was based on datagrams. RCP emphasized terminal-to-host and terminal-to-terminal -terminal connection, Cyclades was concerned with host-to-host -host communication. TRANSPAC was introduced as an BI.25 network. RCP influenced the specification of X. 25. RETD Reda Special de Transmisión de Datos was a network developed by Compañía Telefónica Nacional de España. It became operational in 1972 and thus was the first public network. SCANNET The experimental packet switched Nordic telecommunication network SCANNET was implemented in Nordic technical libraries in the 1970s, and it included first Nordic electronic journal Extemplo. Libraries were also among first ones in universities to accommodate microcomputers for public use in the early 1980s. Topic. CETA HLN CETA is a consortium of airlines. Its high-level network became operational in 1969 at about the same time as ARPANET. It carried interactive traffic and message switching traffic. As with many non-academic networks, very little has been published about it. Topic. IBM Systems Network Architecture IBM Systems Network Architecture SNA, is IBM's proprietary networking architecture created in 1974. An IBM customer could acquire hardware and software from IBM and lease private lines from a common carrier to construct a private network. Topic Telenet Telenet was the first FCC-licensed public data network in the United States. It was founded by former ARPA IPTO director Larry Roberts as a means of making ARPANET technology public. He had tried to interest AT&T in buying the technology, but the monopoly's reaction was that this was incompatible with their future. Bolt, Berenac and Newman BBN provided the financing. It initially used ARPANET technology but changed the host interface to BI.25 and the terminal interface to BI.29. 
Telenet designed these protocols and helped standardize them in the CCITT. Telenet was incorporated in 1973 and started operations in 1975. It went public in 1979 and was then sold to GTE. Topic: Timnet. Timnet was an international data communications network headquartered in San Jose, California that utilized virtual call packet switch technology and used BI.25, SNA, SDLC, BSC and ASCII interfaces to connect host computers servers at thousands of large companies, educational institutions, and government agencies. Users typically connected via dial-up connections or dedicated async connections. The business consisted of a large public network that supported dial-up users and a private network business that allowed government agencies and large companies mostly banks and airlines to build their own dedicated networks. The private networks were often connected via gateways to the public network to reach locations not on the private network. Timnet was also connected to dozens of other public networks in the U.S. and internationally via BI.25, BI.75 gateways. Interesting note, Timnet was not named after Mr. Time. Another employee suggested the name. <laughs> XNS Xerox Network Systems XNS was a protocol suite promulgated by Xerox, which provided routing and packet delivery, as well as higher level functions such as a reliable stream, and remote procedure calls. It was developed from Park Universal Packet PUP. By.25 era There were two kinds of By.25 networks. Some such as DATAPAC and TRANSPAC were initially implemented with an BI.25 external interface. Some older networks such as Telenet and TYMNET were modified to provide a BI.25 host interface in addition to older host connection schemes. DATAPAC was developed by Bell Northern Research which was a joint venture of Bell Canada a common carrier and Northern Telecom a telecommunications equipment supplier. Northern Telecom sold several DATAPAC clones to foreign PTTs including the Deutsche Bundespost. BI.75 and BI.121 allowed the interconnection of national BI.25 networks. A user or host could call a host on a foreign network by including the DNIC of the remote network as part of the destination address. AUSTPAC. AUSTPAC was an Australian public BI.25 network operated by Telstra. Started by Telecom Australia in the early 1980s, AUSTPAC was Australia's first public packet switched data network, supporting applications such as online betting, financial applications the Australian Tax Office made use of AUSTPAC and remote terminal access to academic institutions, who maintained their connections to AUSTPAC up until the mid-late 1990s in some cases. Access can be via a dial-up terminal to a pad, or, by linking a permanent BI.25 node to the network. Conet Conet was a packet-switched data network operated by the Southern New England Telephone Company serving the state of Connecticut. Datanet 1 Datanet 1 was the public-switched data network operated by the Dutch PTT Telecom now known as KPN. Strictly speaking Datanet 1 only referred to the network and the connected users via leased lines using the BI.121 DNIC 2041, the name also referred to the public pad service Telepad using the DNIC 2049. And because the main Videotech service used the network and modified pad devices as infrastructure the name Datanet 1 was used for these services as well. Although this use of the name was incorrect all these services were managed by the same people within one department of KPN contributed to the confusion. Topic: <laughs> Datapack. DATAPAC was the first operational BI.25 network 1976. 
It covered major Canadian cities and was eventually extended to smaller centres. Datex P Deutsche Bundespost operated this national network in Germany. The technology was acquired from Northern Telecom. Airpac Airpac is the Irish public switched data network supporting BI.25 and BI.28. It was launched in 1984, replacing Euronet. Airpac is run by Aircom. Topic: HIPA Net. Hitachi designed a private network system for sale as a turnkey package to multinational organizations. In addition to providing BI.25 packet switching, message switching software was also included. Messages were buffered at the nodes adjacent to the sending and receiving terminals. Switched virtual calls were not supported, but through the use of logical ports, an originating terminal could have a menu of predefined destination terminals. <laughs> Iberpac Iberpac is the Spanish public packet switched network, providing BI.25 services. Iberpac is run by Telefonica. Topic. Janet Janet was the UK academic and research network, linking all universities, higher education establishments, publicly funded research laboratories. The BI.25 network was based mainly on GEC 4000 series switches, and run BI.25 links at up to 8 megabits per second in its final phase before being converted to an IP-based network. The Janet network grew out of the 1970s SRC net later called Circinet network. Topic <laughs> PSS Packet Switch Stream PSS was the UK post office later to become British Telecom National BI.25 network with a DNIC of 2342. British Telecom renamed PSS under its GNS Global Network Service name, but the PSS name has remained better known. PSS also included public dial-up pad access, and various interstream gateways to other services such as Telex. Transpac Transpac was the national BI.25 network in France. It was developed locally at about the same time as DATAPAC in Canada. The development was done by the French PTT and influenced by the experimental RCP network. It began operation in 1978, and served both commercial users and, after Minitel began, consumers. <laughs> Venus P Venus P was an international BI.25 network that operated from April 1982 through March 2006. At its subscription peak in 1999, Venus P connected 207 networks in 87 countries. Venipac Venipac is the national BI.25 public network in Venezuela. It is run by CANTV and allow direct connection and dial-up connections. Provides national-wide access at very low cost. It provides national and international access. Venipac allow connection from 19.2 kilobits per second to 64 kilobits per second in direct connections, and 1200, 2400 and 9600 bit, s in dial-up connections. Internet era. When Internet connectivity was made available to anyone who could pay for an ISP subscription, the distinctions between national networks blurred. The user no longer saw network identifiers such as the DNIC. Some older technologies such as circuit switching have resurfaced with new names such as fast packet switching. Researchers have created some experimental networks to complement the existing Internet. 
Topic: CSNET. The Computer Science Network (CSNET) was a computer network funded by the US National Science Foundation (NSF) that began operation in 1981. Its purpose was to extend networking benefits, for computer science departments at academic and research institutions that could not be directly connected to ARPANET, due to funding or authorization limitations. It played a significant role in spreading awareness of, and access to, national networking and was a major milestone on the path to development of the global Internet. Internet 2 Internet2 is a not-for-profit United States computer networking consortium led by members from the research and education communities, industry, and government. The Internet2 community, in partnership with Quest, built the first Internet2 network, called Abilene, in 1998 and was a prime investor in the National Lambdarail project. In 2006, Internet2 announced a partnership with Level 3 Communications to launch a brand new nationwide network, boosting its capacity from 10 gigabits per second to 100 gigabits per second. In October, 2007, Internet2 officially retired Abilene and now refers to its new, higher capacity network as the Internet2 network. NSFNET. <laughs> The National Science Foundation Network NSFNET, was a program of coordinated, evolving projects sponsored by the National Science Foundation NSF, beginning in 1985 to promote advanced research and education networking in the United States. NSFNET was also the name given to several nationwide backbone networks operating at speeds of 56 kilobits per second, 1.5 megabits per second T1, and 45 megabits per second T3 that were constructed to support NSF's networking initiatives from 1985 to 1995. Initially created to link researchers to the nation's NSF-funded supercomputing centers, through further public funding and private industry partnerships it developed into a major part of the Internet backbone. NSFNET regional networks In addition to the five NSF supercomputer centers, NSFNET provided connectivity to 11 regional networks and through these networks to many smaller regional and campus networks in the United States. The NSFNET regional networks were Barney, the Bay Area Regional Research Network in Palo Alto, California CERFNET, California Education and Research Federation Network in San Diego, California, serving California and Nevada CICINET, the Committee on Institutional Cooperation Network via the Merit Network in Ann Arbor, Michigan and later as part of the T3 upgrade via Argonne National Laboratory outside of Chicago, serving the Big Ten Universities and the University of Chicago in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin Merit, Michnet in Ann Arbor, Michigan serving Michigan, formed in 1966, still in operation as of 2016 Midnet in Lincoln, Nebraska serving Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and South Dakota NEARNET, the New England Academic and Research Network in Cambridge, Massachusetts, added as part of the upgrade to T3, serving Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont, established in late 1988, operated by BBN under contract to MIT. BBN assumed responsibility for NEARNET on 1 July 1993. NorthwestNet in Seattle, Washington, serving Alaska, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, Oregon, and Washington, founded in 1987 NISANET, New York State Education and Research Network in Ithaca, New York JVNCNet, the John von Neumann National Supercomputer Center Network in Princeton, New Jersey, serving Delaware and New Jersey SESQUINET, the sesquicentennial network in Houston, Texas, founded during the 150th anniversary of the state of Texas Shuranet, the Southeastern University's Research Association network in College Park, Maryland and later as part of the T3 upgrade in Atlanta, Georgia serving Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia, sold to BBN in 1994, and 
Westnet in Salt Lake City, Utah and Boulder, Colorado, serving Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. Topic: <laughs> National Lambda Rail. The National Lambda Rail was launched in September 2003. It is a 12,000-mile high-speed national computer network owned and operated by the U.S. research and education community that runs over fiber optic lines. It was the first transcontinental 10-gigabit Ethernet network. It operates with high aggregate capacity of up to 1.6 terabits per second and a high 40 gigabits per second bitrate, with plans for 100 gigabits per second. The upgrade never took place and NLR ceased operations in March 2014. Topic. Transpac, Transpac 2, and Transpac 3 Transpac 2 and Transpac 3, continuations of the Transpac project, a high-speed international Internet service connecting research and education networks in the Asia-Pacific region to those in the U.S. Transpac is part of the NSF's International Research Network Connections program. Topic. Very High Speed Backbone Network Service VBNS. The Very High Speed Backbone Network Service VBNS came online in April 1995 as part of a National Science Foundation NSF sponsored project to provide high speed interconnection between NSF sponsored supercomputing centers and select access points in the United States. The network was engineered and operated by MCI Telecommunications under a cooperative agreement with the NSF. By 1998, the VBNS had grown to connect more than 100 universities and research and engineering institutions via 12 national points of presence with DS3 45 megabits per second, OC3C 155 megabits per second, and OC12C 622 megabits per second links on an all OC12C backbone, a substantial engineering feat for that time. The VBNS installed one of the first ever production OC 48C 2.5 gigabits per second IP links in February 1999 and went on to upgrade the entire backbone to OC 48C. In June 1999, MCI WorldCom introduced VBNS Plus, which allowed attachments to the VBNS network by organizations that were not approved by or receiving support from NSF. After the expiration of the NSF agreement, the VBNS largely transitioned to providing service to the government. Most universities and research centers migrated to the Internet2 educational backbone. In January 2006, when MCI and Verizon merged, VBNS Plus became a service of Verizon Business. See also Circuit switching CompuServe Message switching Multi-bearer network Optical burst switching Packet radio Public data network Public switched data network Store and forward Time-driven switching, a bufferless approach to packet switching Transmission delay Virtual circuit Virtual private network